Hello, boys and girls, and happy Sunday. Welcome again to Bronxwood International Church of God's Children Church. I am your host, Sister Trisha, and I'm excited to be able to connect with you once again, right? So I want you to go call your friends, tell them log on, get over here because Children Church is about to begin. Ooh, right? Now let's get into some praise and worship.
praise the Lord. Those were some really, really awesome praise and worship songs. They really got me going. They really got me singing and dancing and shouting and praising God because he is worthy to be praised. I hope you were dancing and shouting too, just like I was, right? Amen. Now today, I'm excited. I'm always excited, but I'm extra excited today because we get to start on our Christmas series, our new series on Christmas, right? And Christmas is one of my favorite time of year, right? Because I love the Christmas decorations. I love to be able to spend time with my family and my friends and all of my loved ones. And I love Christmas gift giving, right? I love all of those things that come along with the Christmas season, right? But most of all, what I really enjoy is being able to pause and to reflect on the true meaning of Christmas, right? Because it's great to be able to give gifts and receive gifts. It's great to decorate the place and make it look fancy, make it look special. But it's even more important to be able to understand the true meaning of Christmas, right? So I love to be able to pause and reflect on that. And as we go through this series, that's what we want to do. We want to pause. We want to reflect on the true meaning of Christmas. And as we go through the series, we're going to be focusing on different perspectives. How it all began. What happened? How was it told? How was the Christmas story told? How did it begin? That's what we want to focus on, right? Now, in today's series, in today's series, we want to talk about how God told us about this. Now, Jesus came. He was born as a baby. But long before Jesus came, God the Father, he told us that he was going to send his son. He told us this through many different prophets. The prophet Isaiah told us about the birth of Jesus, the coming of the Messiah. He told us more than 2,000 years before he was born, right? God told us through many different prophets that he would send a son, his son, to die so that we could live, right? God wanted to be able to come and relate to us. He wanted to be able to be born in human form so he could understand exactly what we go through, exactly how we feel and all of those things. And especially so that he can live and he can die for our sins so he can redeem us so that we once again will be able to go back to him when he call us and to be able to live eternally with him, right? So let's take a closer look at today's lesson, A Prophecy Fulfilled. Christmas is when we celebrate God's fulfillment of a promise to send us a Savior. This gift wasn't a surprise, but something people had been waiting many years to receive. The promise of Christmas began with a man named Abraham. God promised Abraham that he would have a descendant and that this descendant would be a blessing to all the nations. When the Apostle Matthew wrote the story of Jesus' life, he said that Jesus was the son of Abraham. Not only did Matthew say Jesus was a descendant of Abraham, he also said that he was a descendant of King David. Many years before Jesus' birth, the prophet Isaiah promised that Jesus would reign on David's throne. However, unlike any king or other political leader, Jesus would rule with justice and righteousness forever. The prophet Micah foretold that Jesus would be born in the small town of Bethlehem. Micah said that even though Bethlehem was small, the child born there would rule over all of Israel. This ruler, though not yet born, would come from ancient origins. The prophet Isaiah had a lot to say about Jesus' birth. 
God told him that the promised Messiah would be born in the most miraculous way. He would be born to a virgin through the power of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah said that Jesus would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Isaiah went on to tell us more about this Emmanuel and the greatness that was to come. The Savior would be called Wonderful Counselor, the source of all wisdom, Mighty God, the Creator of all things, Everlasting Father, the source of all life, and Prince of Peace, the one who will make all things right. Unfortunately, not all the prophets had good news about how the Savior's life would play out. Some people would reject him. The prophet Jeremiah said that Jesus' life would be in danger when he was born. And the prophet Hosea said that Jesus and his family would have to flee to Egypt for a time to escape the murderous plots against him. Jesus' birth and life fulfilled all of these prophecies, as well as the most incredible one of all. The prophet Isaiah said that Jesus would be a servant who would suffer for the sins of the world. He would give his life so that anyone who believes in him could be saved from sin. At Christmas, we celebrate the promised gift of salvation given to us by God through the sacrifice of his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. What a great lesson. God in his love put together this perfect plan, the plan of salvation, how to redeem us. He told us that we should wait for Jesus. Wait, he would send Jesus to us. And as we look on, over 2,000 years ago, he fulfilled this prophecy. He sent his son to be born as a baby so that he can live and die for our sins, right? What an amazing God we serve and such love, right? He is a promise keeper. He made the promise and he kept his promise. He sent his son so that he can live and die for our sins. Amen. Now, Today's lesson is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. And it says, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Ju Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people. Amen. He made the promise and he fulfilled that promise by sending his son to be born as a baby for our sins. Amen. We really hope you enjoyed this lesson as we began our Christmas series. And we're looking forward to spending more time with you as we go through the entire story, how it all began, what happened, where did it happen, who did it happen to. We're going to be talking more about that as we go through this series. So thank you once again for joining us today. We hope you learned a lot. Hope you're looking forward to the next one. And we want you to make sure that you call your friends and tell them, hey, you don't want to miss the series. This is this is one of the greatest series ever because we learn about the greatest birth ever, the birth of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you once again for joining us. Now, before we go, let's say a word of prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the promise keeper. Thank you, Lord God, that you gave us your word. You came up with a plan, a plan of salvation, and then you gave us your word that you would send your son. Lord God, and you honored your word, you kept your promise, you sent your son that he would be able to be born, that he would be able to live, and he would be able to die for our sins. Thank you so much for remembering us even before we were born. You knew about us, you wanted to redeem us, and we are truly grateful for that. So we, as we continue learning about you, help us to understand it, help us to retain it, and help us that we will surrender our hearts to you and give you our hearts and our lives and live our lives pleasing to you. We pray that you'll bless the boys and girls, bless their family, and as we go through this week, be with us. 
guide us, lead us, direct us, and help us that what we learn, that we will teach others about it. We give you thanks and we give you praise for hearing and answering our prayers, even now, for Christ's sake. Amen. All right, boys and girls, thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next week. All right. Tell a friend. Bye.